see the clarion. I think we've had that three, four years. Literally larger than my bathtub. <laughs> Everything that we put in here has a, it has to be special. Builders, my name is Remy, and today we've got another special video for you. When you get a chance, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever we post new videos. Today is a continuation of a really awesome in-wall reef tank that we featured here on the Reef Builders channel a couple months ago. We showed you the reef. Now we're going to show you a really awesome collection of fish. Regardless of if it's reef safe or not, what is your dream fish? You might see it in this video today. Go ahead and comment down below. Before we show you this awesome display, let's pick up where we left off last time in the filtration room. Okay, so I just want to say that this is literally larger than my bathtub. So this is what this dreams is are made of. And <laughs> yes, that's why it's called the dream box. So this is so crazy amazing. So we have three three-inch drains. I overestimated drains, that one. And then two returns. We're running two abysses. We need the head height because this one obviously goes upstairs. Yeah, this has got to have a whole lot of oomph behind yep. it. So this is also um, your roller. So I talked to you about this a little bit earlier today. You said this actually lasts quite a while. In several months. So even though we are... It, it does depend on, I mean, I keep the tank very clean and we do big water changes. And mm -hmm. so that obviously, if you're gonna not do your water changes, this is gonna clog faster. Or if you, depending on uh, the type of fish and detritus and all that, but he, we feed heavy in, heavy out, same fish only system. That's why I think it's so important to have great filtration for mm -hmm. it too. So this was uh, the first project when we started this, um, the reef was a secondary one, but this was like, he wanted the dream song. So we got the dream box. What specialty things are you doing to help keep, you know, immune systems up or anything like that? Do you do any type of, you know, dosing of anything to try to keep things at bay? Or are you just really relying on consistency and water changes? So we do, we dose, um, we actually use Nopox, Red Sea product, okay. um, because nitrates and phosphates, just mm -hmm. to keep them at bay. And we're running um, some GFO passively um, and that would depend on uh, parameters, how often we run that. We don't run it full time. I don't run right. carbon full time on this system. Um, I hardly run it maybe once a year for water clarity. If so I what about UV sterilizer? Because you've got so many angels up there. Are you rocking a UV sterilizer I am this? not on this right now, actually. Ooh, I know, right? That is really impressive. But we are going to be adding one, just for the simple fact um, it, you can never be too careful. Yeah, and, and having one, even if we don't run it full time, mm -hmm. having it in place in, mm -hmm. in case of, instead yes. of being like an emergency situation. So we still do heavy in, heavy out. I think when you see the size of these fish, when you see how fat they are, I mean, some of those tangs like, look like they actually have shoulders. Yeah. I mean, food and diet is so important, but also yes, water yes. clarity and water just the water parameters and keeping clean water is very, very important. Too. Yes, it really is. So that's why we over filtered it. Very well, nice. We've been planning this for a while because he, Josh has had some of the fish that you'll see upstairs for, you know, seven, eight years or longer. So Saltwater fish can live a while. Don't forget. This is not like a one, two year and you know, I mean, these are, they're pets. done. These yes. are like their dogs and cats. Yeah. You know I've I mean? had, I've had clients who have had their fish outlive their dogs yeah. and their cats. Very my, easily. My coral beauty was 26. Yeah, that's longer than any puppy I've had. The sure. one other thing too that I like is that we built this up and that way too for maintenance, I'm not having to bend down. Yes, that's really nice. I like how everything is elevated and upwards because it's true. If you're having to get in there and you're having to get underneath it and mess with stuff, it makes cleaning it more difficult and it just it. makes all around like you can actually use this as storage. Now you don't have to worry about anything else like cluttering up your area. Yep. So let's go see who's actually upstairs that's junking up this system downstairs. Yep. This was actually a very well thought out piece to go into the home and it was very much with a purpose of having all of these beautiful specimens inside of it specifically. 
So I think the main thing that we started with was like our dream fish list. And so then we, and then also the biggest size we could do, the good thing that I had for this install was we were part of the whole build when the house was being done so that we could design it. We could do whatever we wanted to have the maximum size. Um, and, and plan can, out the structural and integrity and, plan, and everything. And exactly. So, oh, you will. You have to. I mean, yeah. it would fall through the floor and then wrong. <laughs> right. Yes. This is on the main level. There is obviously the full basement. Right. So, um, and then you know, taking into account Josh's love and affinity for angelfish, and then also the size that they get, and then Correct. making um, you know the the open rock work, the flow, making it so that these fish can thrive for many many years. You see the clarion. Um, that was, was, I think we've had that three, four years. I mean, when we got it, it was, you know, an inch and a half. And this is not an everyday Aquarius angel. No. This is a very pristine and rare specimen. And that there. one is aquacultured. So again, we're focusing on aquacultured fish as well as why, I mean, some of these aren't available aquaculture. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Sue gave us the maize angel um, from Indonesia that was aquacultured, same with the clarion. The conspect is from Poma Labs. So we have a lot of beautiful fish. Um, some other fish that you probably haven't seen in a lot of tanks, which in my opinion shouldn't be in a lot of tanks because they get huge. Right. The Deuce Marie. Yeah, the, yes. This is an amazing tank though. I have had these before. They have such a good personality. They're not, They're not fight aggressive. starters. No. They're not food hoggers. Um, they do just a little flinch of their fins. They're like, Hey, you're in my space yep. and everybody gets it and they just move out of the way, but they don't have to do anything past that. Um, so he is super impressive. You've also got the Picasso up here. He's tolerant of everybody. He's not overly aggressive. However, if you are maintaining the aquarium and like for me, if I'm feeding them and I'm not paying attention, I absolutely need to, he will remind me as he bites my finger. So what's the food regimen like? For this tank we do seaweed um every day and then um a whole bunch of like our like human grade sea uh, seafood that goes into okay. a lot of these so that we get them at uh, like at whole foods mm -hmm. and then so between that so we're talking like large cocktail shrimp yep shrimp um, and we have this other, it's like a mixed seafood, mixed frozen thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so like a seafood medley. So you've got like squid tubes and ab stuff absolutely. like that in there. And then okay. we'll mix it with Celcon, um, or the angel elixir too, and then feed them. Angel elixir is actually a really amazing supplement. I, I used to use it all the time because it's got those sponge additives in there that a lot of people don't understand are part of the very isolated dietary needs for angels. We also are feeding pellets as well. So we have two auto feeders that have a combination of like a seaweed extreme pellet of a form of um, the PE mysis pellets. And then we have, uh, we have uh, two other pellets that we do feed them as well. I had another maintenance client that had a fish prior to me that got too big, that's the scribble. And so we have a place for them and yeah. here. So, and there's um, lots of swimming space in here. Still the rock structure going on in here is very, very open, but provides a lot of shelter. There's still places where there's caves and fish can get away from each other and feel protected. Last addition that we did was the Achilles. And, um, I think he'll be one of the last fish unless they're really special fish that we add, but, um, they are so vascular. They need a tank this size. I don't really, I don't put Achilles in many aquariums. I don't think, um, they belong in smaller aquariums right. because they need that swimming room. Everything that we put in here has a, it has to be special in some way. It doesn't mean expensive. It has to be special, um, fully quarantined because of the collection, obviously. Um, and just good practice. And then also, you know, knowing what size and in, in the bio load that we have left. When you say fully quarantined, what are you breaking it down into when you say that? Are you talking like a minimum of 30 days? Oh, minimum of 30 days. Minimum of 30 days. Yes. So i with observation, probably going for two weeks before you start any type of treatment. Correct. If it's not necessary. Correct. So, um, some of the bigger fish like that, like I mentioned, we just added the Achilles. Mm -hmm. That was actually a trade in fish from one of our other customers that was moving out of the, 
out of the state. And so even though it was in a perfectly healthy aquarium and I trusted it, you know what I mean? We still mm -hmm. kept it at the store. We watched it for a month um, and then we added it after that because I mean, every it was eating great and yes, it was healthy, but I just, I can't take that risk. Yeah. I'm not gonna put, expose all these animals. Right. <laughs> um, and myself, I mean, you know, you, you do it right the first time, you, I mean, I know things happen, but if you take all the right measures, you know, you end up with a beautiful collection exactly. that you have for many, many, many years instead of... Yes, you know, and this is absolutely stunning. You this see is, that... This is very well thought out with a wide variety of animals. You see the people that are like, you know, I had the, the you know, the crash of 2020 or, you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. velvet outbreak of this. I mentally... And for me and for the fish, I could never handle that. If there was something wrong with this tank, I am like here immediately. This is one of my baby tanks. And we've been planning this for years and years. So some of these fish, like the emperor, were juvies when we got them. So, I mean, I've seen the those full, are fun to, I've those seen are the fun full to change. transition mm -hmm. where um, it, it, that is fun to watch. And yeah. so. And this one's still technically a teenager. Yep. That's yeah. not the full streamer yet. Yeah. But yeah, so this is one of the, one of the dream tanks with the dream box, with the dream fish. With the dream diet. <laughs> dream diet. It's a dreamy system. Yes. Cool. Well, thank you, Jen. I want to say thank you to Jen over at New Wave Aquaria. Uh, thank you to Josh for letting us come into his house. And of course, thank you to Evie, our Reef Builders field reporter. Before I go, I just want to let you know that Reef Stock Denver is right around the corner. Join the whole Reef Builders crew on March 2nd and 3rd in Denver. Corals, equipment, speakers, what more could you ask for? It's one of the first reef shows of the season, so a lot of these coral vendors have been cooking up some pretty cool stuff in the off season. Join us at Reefstock Denver. Of course, we've got all the details at reefstock.show slash Denver, or you can check the link in the description below. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next one.